Hi! In computing, the term bootstrapping or pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps refers to the process of launching an operating system on an initially incapable machine. For me, the term bootstrapping also has this flavor of an apparent self-improvement capability. Today, let's see how far we can take this minimal CPU system here along that road. You judge at the end of this video. I've built it from scratch using logic gates and you can build it too. Just follow the link in the description. The Minimal's architecture is deliberately simple. It's just a program counter, two registers, an adder, serial I.O. registers, an address register and some memory, all held together by a bus and a bit of control logic. CPU hardware, as daunting as it may look at first sight, is dumb. We humans have to come up with what's called control microcode. That's a clever sequence of enabling the right components at the right time, forming meaningful operations we in some call an instruction set. Microcode is usually hard-coded in the control logic. Having it in place, our machine can process instructions. But we don't want to hard-code any specific sequence or programs, since we want our machine to be nice and flexible. And that's where we get stuck. After power-up, the RAM is empty and we are left with a sophisticated but useless machine. Back in the old days of mini computers, like this PDP-8 here, a front panel came to the rescue. We'd be able to set the memory address by hand and deposit values in RAM. We'd toggle in a tiny program called a bootloader that would load and start the operating system from some external medium. And the OS, in turn, would facilitate launching other applications, making the CPU useful. Quite painfully, we would initially have to write the operating system from scratch in machine code on a piece of paper. Fortunately, today we could also write a cross-assembler on another platform. That's what I've done for the minimal. I have written the assembler asm.exe and also a version of it in Python. Loading a 4 kilobyte OS from paper tape is good fun for the first two or three times you do it. But let's burn it onto a ROM or Flash IC instead. Upon pressing reset, the bank register and program counter of this CPU are set to zero. The machine starts to execute a small bootloader, copying the following image of the OS from flash to RAM and starting it. I've slowed down the CPU clock so we can take a look at this process. In principle, the OS could also run directly from flash, but switching banks would then be a bad idea. Tried it once, didn't work. Small pop quiz, you figure out why. Having a simple OS in place, we can now interact with the running CPU. We can make it show certain memory addresses, clear RAM areas and process our input data. And even better, we can reuse this functionality to upload stuff into our computer. Whatever we paste into the terminal is treated by the OS as keystrokes. It now becomes possible to have the CPU store our data on its own flash IC, mimicking the functionality of an EEPROM programmer used upon itself, so to speak. Writing to flash memory has a few quirks, so the natural next step is to have the OS provide us with ready-made functions that load, save and organize our content within a simple file system. And once we have that in place, we are ready to further pull up ourselves by our own bootstraps with a text editor that runs natively on the minimal. We all take a simple text editor for granted today, but it is really an essential tool to interact with the CPU and to write new software for it. It is a first and important step towards self-improvement capability. I hadn't written a text editor before and at the back of my mind I considered it a rather simple task, but boy was I wrong. It was one of the most difficult pieces of software I have written on the minimal. But now we can load, save and write source code. The thing missing now to completely unchain this little CPU and free it from its host system is a native assembler that takes our source files and turns them into actual machine code. After I was done with the editor, that was an easier task, since I had written the assembler in C++ and Python before. Let's load it and try it out.
the very last step, and probably only of academic interest, is to try and see if this assembler is capable of assembling itself while running on the minimal. For any decent compiler, self-compilation seems to be the gold standard for proving self-improvement capability. Let me load the assembler source code into the editor. Huh. It's almost 700 lines. So let's start the assembler and have it assemble itself. I'll fast forward here, since this takes around two and a half minutes in real time. Okay, done. All we need to do is to copy the output from hex C000 to the target address D000. Let's load Hello World again. Let's assemble. And yes, it's working. Now, at least in principle, the door is open to write and improve any software we want on the minimal. Well, not the sky, but the RAM is the limit. And this is it for today. As always, I hope that you've got something out of all this. The source code of the text editor and the native assembler is in the GitHub repository. And I've added chapters in the minimal's user manual that explain in detail how to use them. Feel free to browse through it. In one of my next videos, I'll present an updated version of the minimal emulator that reproduces all the minimal's functions cycle exactly and in real time, and also with a bit of retro vibe. So if soldering is not your cup of tea, you can still get your hands on a virtual minimal. Take care. Bye.